Hey there guys, how's it going? Back with another retro game review. Today we're going to be looking at Indiana Jones and the Empress Tomb, released in 2003, developed by The Collective, published by LucasArts. Now, this is a really special game to me, because back when this game came out in 2003, and back when I got it around about that time, this was actually the game that introduced me to the Indiana Jones series. I had never seen any of the Indiana Jones movies prior to this game coming out, and I liked this game so much as a kid that it actually prompted me to go and buy and watch all the movies, so I really have to thank this game for that because I, I became a fan of the series after that. And yeah, this is a third person action adventure game uh, based in the Indiana Jones universe of course. Uh, you play as Indiana Jones, you go on various adventures and try and do some dungeon crawling, you know, finding ancient artifacts across the world and whatnot. You've got plenty of enemies to fight, you know, you, you've got various factions who are looking for these same artifacts. For example, na you'll fight like Nazis, you'll fight the Chinese, you know, triads and whatnot. You, you'll fight all sorts of um, crazy enemy types, you know, 1930s types enemies. And I've got to say, I had a real blast playing this game. I think this game is really fun. And let's talk about it. So... First of all, I want to point out that for 2003, one of the things that this game doesn't get enough credit for, in my opinion, is its presentation. This is a really good looking game. Um, for 2003, the graphics look absolutely fantastic. I think the character models, um, the cutscenes, the environments, the enemy types, the animations, everything about this game, I just think that it looks really authentic, um, as, as well as the... Um, the combat in the game, I think the combat in the game is very dynamic, it's certainly not a button masher, you know, it's a very strategic action game, you know, there's, there are many different ways to approach combat, you know, you can fight your enemies with your fists, um, the X button for example will throw a left hand, the A button will throw a right hand, um, and you can also use weapons, you know, you'll be able to use weapons in your environment, for example you can do things like pick up a bottle and smash it over your enemy's head or you can pick up a chair and just break it over their back and stuff like that. You know, if you knock your enemy into a table, that table will shatter into pieces. And you can pick up a table leg and use it to fight. And it's really fun and really cool how you can use the environment. You know, you can even pick up things like metal pipes and shovels and whatever you can find in the vicinity to, to help you destroy an opponent. You can use it. Um, you, you know, you could even strategically, like, knock an opponent off a cliff. And... It's kind of interesting because this game has a lot of interesting guns and weapon types and pretty much always in this game, you know, bar two or three sections, you'll always have a gun. But I find myself actually wanting to not use guns just so that I could enjoy having a, a punch up with enemies because it, that's one of the best things about the game is the combat. It really is fun, you know, the melee combat and, you know, the different types of guns you'll find in the game, you know, you'll start off with, a, with um, Indiana Jones's standard um, signature revolver which you'll use throughout the game uh, you'll also find various other handguns such as like luger pistols morga morza pistols and stuff like that you'll find um, some bigger weapons such as like shotguns and machine guns which pack a punch you know they're more powerful you know you can blast an opponent off a ledge or off the side of a cliff with one of those weapons you know you'll even find weapons that work underwater such as such as um like harpoon guns spear guns here and there that you'll you'll be able to use under the water. You'll also be able to use like machetes, um, different types of knives and stuff like that. Um, you know, there's a, a whole mission in this game which takes place in Turkey, and you'll be able to use a Turkish knife, which looks pretty cool and does decent amount of damage. And I just think that the combat in this game and the the whole um, you know di different weapon types that you'll unlock throughout the game it always keeps the combat feeling fresh, even though it's you know, it doesn't change a whole lot, you know, the aesthetics of it, the cosmetics of it change a lot because of the different weapons you'll use and, and the different locations. And I just think that this is a really blast action game. Um, as far as the, the story, the plot goes, I, I mean, it's fairly simple. As I mentioned earlier, Indiana Jones is traveling the world, finding different artifacts and whatnot, as he's an archaeologist. Um, there is a um, there is a plot involving a particular artifact that he wants to find, um, you know, there are various factions such as the Nazis, the Chinese and whatnot that are trying to find this artifact, which is in the um, lost tomb 
of an ancient Chinese emperor and it's said to be able to control people's minds and whatnot and yeah there's a plot there it's it's not the most interesting plot out there but it's it's there you know it's in the background it's explained through expedition and cutscenes and whatnot um, as for the game's um, voice acting and its plot, I gotta say the voice acting was pretty good for the most part. Um, unfortunately, they weren't able to get um, Harrison Ford to reprise his role as Indiana Jones. However, interestingly enough, the guy that they did get to voice Indy was a guy called David Esch. Now, interestingly, prior to this game, he had actually voiced um, Han Solo in a couple of Star Wars video games. So. It was interesting to me, like that made a lot of sense because Han Solo, of course, was another um, Harrison Ford character that he played in the movies. So it made sense to get that same guy to come back and voice Indy here. So, you know, he, he sounds decent, you know, for, for, for what he's given. I mean, he, he sounds enough like Harrison Ford to the point where it sounds authentic and he does a decent enough job. Um, some of the other voice acting in the game is a little bit pantomime, like some of the like really terrible German accents and terrible Chinese accents, but part of me wonders whether that was done for laughs. You know, part of me w kind of wonders whether it was done on purpose, but that's neither here nor there. You know, for, for, the, for the most part, it's Indy who talks, and his voice acting I found was solid. Um, th there are some characters you'll be introduced to throughout the game, like allies and enemies and whatnot, um, one of your main allies in the game is, is a woman called Mei Ling, who you'll meet, she's kind of this like crazy ninja woman who you'll meet early in the game, and she helps you out in a few sections, and you even have to save her at one point, so she's like a potential love interest. Um, there's a character from one of the movies that you're introduced to, the character Wu Han, I believe you were, um, you were introduced to him in the um, Temple of Doom movie, and I believe that this movie is, is set before then, so um, this is kind of like when him and Indy first meet, you know, when you have a mission in China, you meet him and he helps you out and whatnot, and there's quite a funny um, torrent section where you're on the back of a, one of them, like, pull bikes, and he's, like, pulling you through the through the streets of Hong Kong, and, you know, you're <laughs> sitting on the back of it shooting um, cars that are pursuing you, you know, trying to run you over and whatnot, and that's quite a fun um, torrent section that kind of um, adds a bit of variation to the gameplay, you know, if you've watched my reviews, You'll know that I appreciate it when developers add a certain amount of variation to games. And there's plenty of varied sections in this game. Like I mentioned, there's the, the turret level. Um, you know, there's other levels where there's plenty of platforming. Um, the, the, there's levels where um, you'll, you'll do things like you'll operate a crane or you'll operate machinery and stuff like that. And this game always feels fresh from start to finish, whether it's because of the varying locations you know, levels that, that take place underwater, uh, whether it's the um, enemy types, you know, whether it's the, the different weapons you'll find, whether it's the authenticity of characters speaking in their native tongue, you know, their native languages. You know, everything about this game to me feels really well done, and I really do think that the developers at the Collective had a lot of passion for this project, and had they would had a little bit more of a development cycle, this game could have been a masterpiece, like, if they they've been able to make a longer quest and, and you know maybe have some more missions and whatnot it could have been even better but sadly this game for some reason kind of flew under the radar but I think for 2003 it was one of the better games of that year um, there are some interesting boss battles like for example you, you even fight the Kraken in this game yes you fight the Kraken as Indiana Jones I mean how cool is that and it's a funny boss battle too, I mean it's so like, it just comes out of nowhere, like it feels so out of place, I'm like, he just fought the Kraken, you think you'd mention that again, but I don't I don't recall it ever being mentioned afterwards, it's kind of funny, I mean, um, Indiana Jones, wow, he fought the Kraken, you think that would be one of his tales to tell, you know, while he's while he's in the university and whatnot, but <laughs> either way, it's, it, it's interesting this game, it really is, I mean, you know, there's a lot of, like, supernatural stuff that goes on here and there. There's a lot of, like, dungeon crawling, you know, kind of like Tomb Raider type games where you're, you're crawling through dungeons. Um, you know, there's plenty of collectibles. You'll find things such as, like, artifacts throughout the game on each levels. You know, that here and there there'll be, like, secret areas you can find that have some creatively hidden artifacts which you can view on the start menu. You get sort of, like, a shelf where you can see them all lined up and whatnot. Um, you know, like I said, this, this game, one of the things that I would really credit it for is its atmosphere. It's got a very good atmosphere. Um, it's very good at building tension. 
Like, for example, you'd be crossing a bridge and you fall off into a, a, a lake full of crocodiles and whatnot. Speaking of crocodiles, I'm sure anybody who's played this game will know of the terrifying sequence um, at the end of the first act where you have to avoid this big giant crocodile. Like, you can't do any damage to it. You have to avoid it. And that was terrifying. It really was. So, kudos to the developers there for adding some tension and really making it atmospheric. As for the soundtrack, you get the... Um, Indiana Jones soundtrack from the movie, but you also get some um, areas of this game that have its original score, and it's a decent enough soundtrack. It really does suit the atmosphere, and it really does suit the tone. And I just think that this game is a blast, man. I really do enjoy it. You know, there's some little cool quirks, like if you're in a fight against an enemy, and Indiana Jones can have his hat knocked off, and you can choose like whether or not to pick up the hat and put it back on and whatnot. Um, you know, c certain areas he'll be wearing his jacket, certain areas he won't be. Um, you know, there's areas where you'll sort of be in disguise or you'll be in a tuxedo and whatnot. And it it's just, it's a really good game, really. Is I I've got no real issue. I've got no serious issue with the game. Some of the platforming can be a little bit annoying because, I mean, it's so easy to, like, glitch out and fall off and stuff like that. But um, y you will eventually do it if you just persevere. It's not game-breaking. I didn't run into any like game breaking bugs or anything like that. I've heard some people say that this game is is buggy. I haven't really experienced any serious bugs and I've played this game many times over the years. So to me this game is excellent. I, I give this game a solid um, 8 out of 10. I think in retrospect um, this game was a lot better than advertised. I think it was a lot better than it got credit for. So that's pretty much how I see it. Um, giving this game a solid 8 out of 10. Um, let me know what you guys think, and um, yeah, stay tuned for more retro reviews. I got a lot of reviews coming, guys. But yeah, it'll just take me it'll just take me time to record them and put and whatnot. But I've got plenty of reviews coming. So let me know what you guys think. Anyway, thanks for watching, and God bless.